Welcome to Bay News Now November Update. I'm Grace Curry. And I'm Madeline Matthews. And we've got a look at your latest school district headlines. Oyster Bay High School has named its 2024 valedictorian and salutatorian. Congratulations to seniors Deanna Bazar and Anya Kelly. These smart students are not only top of their class, but they're also close friends. You can read all about their incredible and prestigious achievements on the school district website. To sports, it was an amazing fall season in Oyster Bay Athletics. All of our varsity teams qualified for playoffs. 100% all of our teams made the playoffs for this fall. You should all be congratulated on your hard work in the classroom and on the playing field. This is a tremendous accomplishment and as always, go Bayman! Our girls soccer team advanced to the county finals with a huge upset win over West Hempstead. Our girls field hockey team made it to the semifinals, finishing second place in their league. Our girls volleyball team had an undefeated regular season and is heading to the county playoffs in the number one seed. So Coach Isles and I couldn't be more proud of our group for being undefeated and our conference champs. We also couldn't be more proud of the tradition and culture of winning for the last few years, but none of that plays a role in how we move forward. We're really proud of how hard we've worked and how well we've done this season, and we're excited to go into playoffs knowing who we're going to play and hoping we do the best that we can. Our boys soccer team played hard-fought semifinal matchup against the top-ranked team in the state. Carl, please. Because of this group of seniors, the program is continuing to push forward and will be in a good place for many years to come. Congratulations to all of our cross-country athletes. Our boys cross-country team won the team county championship and Chris Chargunio won the individual county championship, which was his 11th individual county championship as a Bayman. In addition, we would like to wish all the cross-country runners good luck at states. Winter sports are kicking off November 6th and for the middle school and November 13th for the high school teams. A reminder, you can watch most games on the Bay Sports YouTube page. Do you normally drive to school? You may want to rethink your decision before getting in your car. Bay News Now's Kira Sansone tells us more. Coming back from your off period with no parking spots available can be quite frustrating. Well, I've been seeing a lot of teachers in the parking lot, which is like kind of messing with all of us, and there's not enough spots, so I think that there's a problem there. If you're trying to sneak into the senior lot, the school says that they have a system in place to prevent that. When you register for your spot, you have a, a specific parking tag. And so we do have people sometimes go through the parking lot and make sure that every car parked there has a tag. We spoke with assistant principal John Pardue about the issue to see who is actually supposed to be parking in the senior lot. Uh, the upper senior lot is um, partially reserved for seniors. We have 45 spots available for them. However, on days when there might be a teacher conference or added guests to the building, that lot is often where the overflow goes. But what happens to people who park in the lot when they aren't supposed to? Seniors get upset with them, but are there any real consequences? There are. Um, as many of our juniors last year found out, uh, the loss of potential parking privileges, the loss of junior privileges uh, resulted sometimes. And another consequence, the potential of being posted on the bad parking Instagram. This is where they post all the pictures of bad parking and of people who just aren't supposed to be in the lot. No one parks in the line. It's, it's very messed up. Everyone's ending up on OB bad parking. It's not good. Moral of the story, if you're going to park in the senior lot, park in the lines and make sure that you're a senior. Kira Sansone, Bay News Now. Wow, I should be getting to school earlier then. Yeah, thankfully I don't have to worry about that problem for a couple more years. <laughs> and now to fine and performing arts. The first concert of the year is in the books and it was a success. A night of chamber music was held on October 26th and featured the chamber ensemble playing some beautiful music. Thanks to the students, Mr. Sissia, and everyone who attended. A big honor for some Vernon student musicians. The sixth grade advanced bands, under the direction of Miss Lauren Macy, got to perform for music legend Billy Joel and the community on October 19th. It was a part of a street renaming ceremony for the piano man himself. Following the performance, the new street sign out of Joel's 20th Century Cycles shop was officially renamed as Billy Joel Way. 
And finally, 26 students from Vernon and OBHS have been selected as all county musicians. Congratulations to all. Looking forward to November, three talented Oyster Bay students are being recognized by the Nassau County Art Guild. Seniors William Amanera and Ava DeAngelis, along with junior Omar Figueroa, each had their artwork selected from more than 260 2D or 3D art submissions. The students' work will be displayed as part of the exhibit at the Guild from November 5th to November 25th. Congratulations! Also coming up this month, Tri-M and Music Honor Society inductions will be held on November 13th in the school library. And the middle-level bands will perform the halftime show at the Empire Classic in Madison Square Garden under the direction of Mr. Gianetta. Some fun for the whole family is coming to Oyster Bay East Norwich School District. This year's Vernon musical is Disney's Finding Nemo Jr. The show will swim your way November 17th and 18th at 7 p.m. Scan the QR code on your screen to purchase tickets. That sounds like a really fun time. Are you going to go? Yeah, I love going to the Vernon musicals and seeing all the young kids perform. Same here. Students have seen construction happening in the places all throughout the school, and many want to learn more about what these spaces will be used for. Bay News Now's Lucas Arnella takes a look. Many new and exciting changes are being made to the Oyster Bay East Norwich High School. Some of the most important work that's happening is part of the bond referendum project, which has the addition of three 21st century learning spaces. These new learning spaces each have something to offer, from the new TV studio to a new collaborative space for students, both on the second floor. And then downstairs where the current library is, there is going to be a space called the Innovation Lab. And that's going to have an area devoted to the robotics department and also to have a genius bar where students are going to be running um, just like you would have a genius bar like at Apple. This place may not look like much now, but by April of next year, this space will be dedicated to our upcoming TV studio. As you can see behind me, some work still needs to be done before it can be open. Even though the TV studio won't be finished for a little while, you can find some completed renovations if you take a look outside. The school got a whole kind of revamp, a little makeover. Um, there's a nice new sign on the front of the building um, to kind of fix the, the entrance a little bit to make it a little more obvious and a little more grand. That's right, the front of the building has gotten a couple changes, and they're not just for appearance. The terraza is really cool because it kind of, it, it, it allows us to have a safe place for the kids to sit while they're waiting for rides, but it's also a nice place to socialize. Some students have already started noticing these changes. I've noticed on the second floor there's been like, um, some like renovations going on, and, and I, I heard that's like, gonna be like the new broadcasting like, room or whatever, and I'm really excited to see how that turns out. Lucas Arinella, Bay News Now. In technology, the 8th grade technology course is busy piloting the new project, Lead the Way curriculum, and showcasing their microbit processor board project. Students are excited to learn how to design and program these devices. Well, that's your November update. Thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to check out Bay News Now this morning, every weekday, for even more updates. And for all your sports coverage, check out Bay Sports on YouTube. Have a great day, Oyster Bay.